Thanks for tuning in. I'm Donnie, and today I'm going to share my thoughts on these two high-end off-road helmets. This is my 6D ATR2. I bought this helmet in 2018, and I've used it in every race I've been in since that time. This helmet has the Omni Directional Suspension System, or ODS as 6D refers to it, and they're basically two inner shells that are allowed to move independently of one another. 6D claims that it provides a lot better protection for linear and angular acceleration. So I've been using this helmet as my primary race helmet since 2018, and I've got some things that I like about it and a few things that I don't like about it, so I'll share those with you now. I'll start with the things that I like about the helmet. This is an extremely comfortable helmet. It's got a lot of padding inside, so you can wear this helmet all day and you won't get any pressure areas or any areas that are, that are uncomfortable in the helmet just because it's got so much padding inside. Another thing I like about this helmet is the cheek pads are excellent. The cheek pads put all the pressure on your jaw rather than on your cheeks. A lot of helmets tend to squeeze in on your cheeks up high and when you open your mouth, you can't close your mouth without biting your cheeks. Um, but the 6D helmet is not at all like that. It puts all the pressure on your lower jaw so you can still talk. So that makes this helmet a great choice if you're using it for motor vlogging or if you're communicating with other riders. Uh, I've never used it for that. I've only used it as a race helmet. But I do like the way the cheek pads put the pressure on your jaw rather than actually on your face. Another thing I like about this helmet is the finish is holding up really well. I've been racing for two years with this. I've hit a lot of branches and limbs uh, and other things along the trail, and the finish is holding up really well. It's got a few scuffs on it. The fluorescent areas still look good, and they haven't faded that I can see. Overall, the finishes on the helmet seem to be holding up really well. I've already mentioned the ODS, but I do think that the ODS system is probably one of the best systems on the market as far as protection in off-road helmets. And as you would expect for a helmet in this price range, it comes with a really nice bag. So I really like the bag this 6D come, came with. So what I typically do is I put my helmet in there, I'll put my goggles and gloves, and even my GoPro in the helmet bag when I'm headed to a race, so that way I know I've got it all together when I get ready to head to the starting line. Another thing I like about this bag is it's got this zipper pocket on the front that's perfect for extra lenses and tear-offs. So I always have those, I'm not gonna forget them because they're in my helmet bag. So I really like that zipper pocket on the front. It's got another mesh pocket on the back. Really nice bag, I like this bag a lot. So there are a couple of misses with the 6D in my opinion. Um, the first thing that I'll mention is the 6D is a really deep helmet. It's got a really deep crown area. When I first got the helmet, it was coming down too far on my head and actually pressing my goggles down onto my nose and kind of folding my ears down, which was a little bit uncomfortable. So it's not a fit issue, it's the depth of the helmet. This is a relatively common complaint with the 6D ATR2 helmets, and 6D has, a, has come up with a solution for it. Uh, when I contacted 6D about it, they sent me a shim kit, which includes basically some foam shims that you add uh, underneath the liner in the top of the helmet, and that seemed to fix it for the most part. After about an hour and a half of racing or so, I will notice sometimes I'm having to adjust the helmet to, to push it up because it's pushing the go my goggles down on my face. But overall, those shims fix that problem. Kind of going along with that same theme, the ATR2 is kind of a tall helmet. So it does come down a little closer to your shoulders than some other helmets might. So you might want to consider that if you wear a neck brace. I use an Atlas Air neck brace with this and that seems to work pretty well, but the Atlas neck braces tend to sit pretty low. So um, some of the other neck braces that are a little bit higher, there could be some freedom of movement issues, so you might want to try one on. My only other complaint about the 6D is that it is not the lightest helmet on the market. It's a little bit on the heavy side. So I've got my shipping scale here. 6D claims that this uh, ATR2 weighs 1,480 grams. Sometimes helmet manufacturers will use the medium size to say what their weight is, and this is an XL. So that might explain partly what's going on here. As you can see, this helmet's 1,600 grams. So that's 3.6 pounds, or three pounds and nine ounces. So heavier helmets kind of make my neck sore. And after about an hour of racing with this helmet, you really start to feel that weight. So this is my new Aero Aviator 2.3 AMS2. Now I haven't raced with this helmet yet, but I have ridden with it a few times, so I can tell you what I think about it. This is a 100% carbon Kevlar shell with the AMS2 system. The AMS2 system with Aero is similar to the ODS system where it has two inner shells that are allowed to move independently of one another. So one of the things I like the most about this Aviator 2.3 is the weight. 
This thing is extremely lightweight. And on the rides I've done recently, this thing didn't seem to make my neck sore at all. And that's the primary reason I wanted this helmet as a race helmet. So Aero claims this helmet is 1,070 grams. So let's test that out on the shipping scale. 1,150 grams. That's 2.6 pounds or two pounds and nine ounces. So that's 450 grams lighter than the 6D, which is a huge difference. So the depth of this helmet seems just about right for me and my 100% goggles work really well in the opening and I haven't had any problems with fitment or anything on a ride. It doesn't seem to push the goggles down on my face or anything like that. So I'm really happy about that. This is a really comfortable helmet. It does not have as much padding in it as the 6D does. Um, but there are no pressure spots or anything that becomes bothersome after a few hours of riding. So um, really happy with the comfort of this helmet as well. It does also come with a really nice helmet bag. It's got plenty of room inside for the helmet along with goggles, gloves, and anything else you'd like to put in there. It does have a pocket for lenses, tear-offs, any kind of accessories you have. So it comes with a nice helmet bag as well. So there's not really anything I don't like about this helmet, but there are a couple things to consider. Um, one is the cheek pads are really, really tight. When I first got the helmet, I actually thought it was too small um, and I was a little worried I was going to have to send it back. But I removed the cheek pads and tried it on and the crown of the helmet fit really, really well. So I knew it was really just kind of a, uh, a cheek pad thing. And what I found is, is I really kind of need to pull outward a little bit on these straps when, when I put the helmet on to put it on comfortably. So it does squeeze in on your cheeks pretty well, which is a good thing when it comes to having a helmet fit tightly and not move around. It puts the pressure more higher on your cheeks than the 6D does. So when you open your mouth, it does squeeze your cheeks in somewhat, so it makes it a little more difficult to talk without biting your cheeks. So that's one thing to consider, but those cheek pads will break in over time. So that's not really a big concern. Overall, the helmet is really, really comfortable. So if you're considering an aero helmet, one thing you want to keep in mind is that there's no U.S. distributor for these helmets, which means they're not sold in the United States. Um, if you're going to buy one of these helmets, you're going to have to buy from an overseas company, and as a result, you're not going to get a DOT sticker. That's not a problem for me because I'm only using the helmet off-road, but if you're using the helmet for a dual sport or some other on-road use, then that might be a problem. I did some research before buying this helmet, and I ended up ordering it from chromeburner.com. That's a company in the Netherlands, uh, and overall I think it took about 8 to 10 days to get this helmet from the time I ordered it. If you have thoughts or questions about either of these helmets, feel free to leave those down in the comments below, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Come around here on this side of the camera and tell our YouTube audience why you're never in the videos anymore. Why? Uh, because you're never in the videos. You know the channel name is Dirt Biking with Donnie and Chase. Uh, I gotta, I gotta get ready to work in a minute, gotta eat.